Let's begin. First, we want to start off with some vocabulary. Some you may know, some's going to be new. So what's a point? Well, the definition of a point is it's indicated by a location and has no size. So it looks something like this. We usually draw a dot and we label this point A. Now, when it says it, it's a location, so A is right there, right where I put the dot. Point B would be right here, where I put this dot. It has no size. What does that mean? This dot has no diameter, there's no radius, there's no area of this little circle. We just have to draw a circle because to draw a spot, our pencil has some diameter to it. But if we're talking about the point in theory, there is no size to it. What's a line? Well, a line is a straight path that extends in two opposite directions without end. It has no thickness and infinitely many points. What does that mean? Well, a line, you'd think, okay, we just draw a straight line. Now, a straight line is going to look like this. Boom. Any direction. But this straight line, when we talk about a real line, it, that extends in two opposite directions without end. What does that mean? This line doesn't stop from here to here and that's it. This line will keep going to the left and to the right forever, so we indicate that with these little arrowheads. A line has to have arrowheads that indicate it keeps going on forever in both directions. It has no thickness. This is just like the points where it said it had no size. Lines have no thickness. And th that means that this line, that, well, it does really have a thickness. It's the thickness of your pencil lead. But what it, we have to draw it with, again, your pencil lead has a thickness, so it'll be there, but Really, there is no thickness to that line. Infinitely many points. What does that mean? That means we can draw an infinite amount of points on this line. We can call this point C, point D, right next to that point E. An infinite amount of points we can put on this line. Planes. Well, what's a plane? A plane is a flat surface that extends without end. It has no thickness and infinitely many lines. What does that mean? Well plane is just some surface, so the way we can draw that is like a diamond shape or a square. Usually it's some kind of square or rectangle. So this is going to be a surface. And that flat surface extends without end. Well, we don't have to draw arrow shapes. This, this is just a surface and we say it has no end. There's no thickness and infinitely many lines. Again, this we have to draw thickness on our, on our lines just because our pencil has thickness, but there is no thickness to it. And you can draw an infinite amount of lines. That means there could be a line going like this in both directions, a line going like this, a line going like this. You can draw all sorts of lines across this, this surface. Moving on. Okay, two more vocabulary words. Collinear points. So collinear points, points that are on the same line. So if I have a line here, we're going to call this a line, and I put the two arrowheads because it's a line, I'm going to have two points on this line. We're going to call this point A and call this line point B. Point A and B are collinear. But what if we had another point out C, out here, and they're going to call this C. C is not collinear with A and B because it's not on the same line. However, you had a point out here, let's call this point D. Well, that would be collinear because if you extended this line, it goes straight through D. So D, A, and B are collinear. C is not collinear with the rest. Coplanar, what does that mean? Points and lines on the same plane. So that means you draw that rectangle shape again. Or we can draw a rhombus. This is, and we're going to draw points and lines on the same plane. So I'm going to put a point right here, A, and point B. They're all on this plane here, and point C. These are all coplanar because they're on this line, on this plane. I could draw a line right here. And this line, since it's on the plane, it is coplanar with both of these points. Now. We got to talk about notation. I'm going to go back because I skipped this. So going back a slide, when we talk about a line, one way we indicate this, if I have this line here and C and D are both on that line, we can we can indicate a line this way, C D with a line over it. You'll see this notation. This means line C D. So this is a line that passes through C D. We could all also call this line line C E with the same notation with the arrowheads. This just indicates it's this line that passes through CE. It's putting a label on this line. And you have to have two of the points on it, and you have to have an arrowhead over it. You could also call this line DC. We're going backwards, 
It's kind of like the same thing as CD. It's there are two points in the same line. Another way of indicating this, they all mean the same line. All right. So knowing that, let's look at this example. What are two other ways to name line QT? So say that as line QT. Line QT. That's how you'd actually say it. Two other ways to name line QT. Well, QT is going up and down right here. It's actually these dots mean it's kind of cutting through this plane and going straight through the bottom and straight up. Well, what points are actually on line QT? We have points N, Q, and T. That means two other ways I could name that line. I can call this NQ, line NQ, with the arrowhead line on top, or I call this line NT. Those are both work. And there's a few other ways as well. What are two other ways to name a plane P? Well, this, the, this P right here, this means we're a plane P, this, this uh, parallelogram right here. What are two ways to name plane P? Well, we can, instead of naming it plane P, we can pick other points that are on this plane. We can call this plane, we can call this plane, we can pick two points. We have to actually pick three points to name a plane. So plane, let's say R, Q, V. It's so R, Q, V, because R, Q, and V are three points on this plane, so we can call this plane R, Q, V. Another way to call this is plane, pick three others, S, V, R, S, V, R. So three points on a plane, three points will make a plane. That's how we can label it. We call it plane SVR and plane RQV. What are three collinear points? So three points that are on the same line. Well, we have two options. RQ and S. RQ and S right here. They're on this line that's cutting through, that's on the plane. And we got the other one that went straight up and down the plane. That's going to be T, Q, and N. This V. It's on the same plane, but it's not in line with these other points. It's over by itself. Moving on. More vocabulary today. So segment. Segment. Now, it's a part of a line that consists of two endpoints and all points between them. What does that mean? You know how a line actually has those arrowheads? It keeps going on to the left and right forever. Well, segments has ends. So a segment can be drawn like this. We got this point. We'll call it A. I'm going to draw a line, and then it ends right here at point B. This is a segment. There are two points that stop. Just stops. It doesn't go on forever. It ends right there. This is called a segment. And since I have A and B are my two points on the end of the segment, I can call this segment AB and I can label this as AB with a bar on top. Notice this bar does not have arrowheads. It's just a bar. So this is segment AB. You could also call it segment BA. For array, Array is a part of a line that consists of one endpoint and all the points of the line on one side of the endpoint. Well, what does that mean? Let's say I have a point, let's call it a D. Point here, and then I have a line that goes out this way forever to infinity. This would be called ray D. This is, it's kind of like the between point between a line and a segment. One end stops at the D, one end goes forever. Now, if we had point D right here, and we have another point on this ray, point E, we can label this as ray DE and put a line with an arrow on top, only one arrowhead. Now, you have to put the D on the left side because if, since the arrow is pointing to the right, that means it's ending at D and going on forever in the E direction, I think. Opposite rays share the same endpoint and form a line, so it looks like this. I have a point in the middle, we'll call this F. I'm a point right here, we'll call this D, and we're going to have a point right here, and we'll call this H. So you have a line that goes through all these, and it goes forever in, in the left and right direction. Well, we, have, we can split this up into two different rays. So we have one ray that goes from F to D, and one ray F to H. So these are going to be opposite rays, since they go in the opposite directions, left and right. All right. This. Now, one part of geometry is we, we try to prove things, and we have, we have statements of facts. And these are called postulates or axioms. So it's an accepted statement of fact. And these are what we use to, to build geometry proofs. These, these are the foundations here to prove things match or don't match. So today, we're just going to go through a few of these. These are, these are just statements of fact that you need to know. This is proof. This is always true. And we'll go over this in class, and we'll do some activities. Instead of just me saying, this is true, we'll actually play around with this. So the first one, you want to write these down. 
All right, through any two points, there's exactly one line. And you might know this one. This, maybe this is a little familiar. So line T passes through points A, B. Line T is the only line that passes through points. So you have points A and B, any two points, any two points anywhere. There's only one line that goes straight through them all. You, you can't curve a line, so there's only one way to go through straight two points. And we'll play with that. The next one, if two distinct lines intersect, then they intersect at exactly one point. So line AE and line DB intersect at point C. So whenever you cross two lines and they're not pair, they're not right on top of each other. They're different lines. They're at different angles. They're not, and they're not, bam, right on top. They're going to cross at one point. There's no way to draw one line, and you draw another line, and it crosses twice. No, this doesn't happen. It's only going to cross once. So you could just take two sticks. If you put them right on top of each other and did that X thing with them you're not going to be able to make those two sticks cross more than once if those are straight. So this, these are postulates. These are facts. They are always true. Now, two more. So if two distinct planes intersect, then they intersect exactly one line. So looking at this diagram, this is really, does, shows this really well. You got the blue plane intersecting with the yellow plane. They intersect at this line. Just like two lines intersect at a point, I mean, planes are, it's the same idea. A plane, a 3D object, intersects at a 2D object. The lines where the 2D object intersects at a 1D object, just one point. So plane RST and plane WST intersect at line ST. A line has S and T. Now, last one. Through any three non-collinear points, there is exactly one plane. So these are examples. Um, if you want to practice these at home, I'm going to put these at the end of every video. If you just want to kind of skip and do the answers, that's fine as well. Oh, did that stop? Nope. All right, so just look at these, pause the video, and we'll wait. All right, I'm just going to solve these. So hopefully you practice this. What are two other names for xy? xy is this line here, and xy has r also going through this. So instead of line xy, we can call this line xr, and you do the arrows on top, or you can call this line ry. These are two ways you can do it. You can also do it a few other ways, y, r, you can call it line yx instead, just flip the x and the y. Everything works. What are opposite rays? So that's, we have a point in the middle and rays going in opposite directions. Well, one opposite ray, let's take this r and the x and y again. r is kind of that middle point. So rx will be a ray going like this. Another ray would be ry. Those are opposite rays. Intersection of the two planes is going to be a line, just like we said a few slides ago. Intersection of two planes forms the line. So the line is right here, and that's along R and S. So it'll be R, S. And since it's a line, you put arrowheads up there. Next one. Take a second to try this out. Pause the video. All right. Are A, B, and B, A the same ray? Explain. Well, oh, there should be arrowheads up here. So it's A, B like this and BA like this, the same ray. Are they the same ray? Well, no. Because when you do AB, AB would look like this. You have a point A and a point B. And that means the ray starting at A and going through B. Well, BA, if I had B right here and A right here, BA, the ray is starting at B and going through point A and going on forever. Those are kind of mirrors of each other. Those aren't the same thing. So how would you explain that? Draw the diagram and, and show it like that. Now it's explained that the ray starts at A and ray starts at B here. There you go. A segment has endpoints at R and S. What are the two names of the segments? All right. A segment has endpoints at R and S. So we'll draw a segment. I always like drawing a picture. Segment, it's a line that has two points at end, right? So two points, endpoints at R and S. What are two names for this segment? Well. It'll be R and S, segment R S like that, just with a line. We can also we don't we can write the, just flip the order, so it's segment S R with a line above. I know you think they're just opposites, but those are two distinct ways of calling it. You can call it all R S or S R. They are distinct and they mean the same line. 